Hello and welcome to another edition of TopCon Talks Construction. My name is Matthew Marcioni. I'm a district sales manager for TopCon Positioning Systems. Um, Thanks again for joining us. The uh, the topic today is hybrid technology. Um, What is hybrid technology? Just to get this out of the way for everybody. It's the combination of both uh, GNSS and robotic uh, technology in one uh, consolidated whole. Basically, it's a field system that uh, improves field work, more productivity, more efficiency. So um, that's the topic today. And I am very pleased to have with me two uh, professionals. Uh, the first person I'll introduce, and I'll let them uh, each introduce themselves. And I want you guys to give some background about yourselves as well. Um, we have Brent Hayes who is sales representative for Langham Incorporation. He's located in South Florida. So Brent, thank you so much for coming by. And with Brent, I've got uh, Jim Cesaro. And uh, Jim is the owner operator of Atlantic Land Designs down in Jensen Beach, Florida. So Jim, thank you very much for taking uh, time from your busy day and your busy week to join us on this discussion, this podcast uh, about TopCon Talks Construction. But again, specifically, this is a uh, geo-specific conversation the three of us are going to have. So um, let's get right to it about hybrid technology. Brent, please just introduce yourself and tell everybody uh, who you are. Uh, Thanks, Matt. I'm Brent Hayes with Lincoln Corporation, and I'm the territory manager in South Florida. Uh, And uh, I had started in 97 selling uh, TopCon equipment and uh, been enjoying it ever since. Awesome. Awesome. So you've seen the uh, evolution of technology as myself. I started in surveying in 89, sadly. Uh, So there were still wooden boxes with Caney transits and and Deeskin transits, unfortunately. That's 1990s, not 1890s. Um, And I did see also the progression of the technology. So welcome aboard. I'm happy that you're here with us because you bring to this discussion uh, lots of history and a lot of uh, experience. uh, Jim, tell us about who you are and uh, where you're located and a little bit about uh, what you're doing as far as your profession. Okay, well, I started out um, as a drafter um, in 1988 for a land surveyor um, and worked my way up to vice president of that company over a 10 year period and then uh, got licensed and started working and getting exposed to GPS technology. Um, in the late 90s in West Palm Beach, and then opened my own business in the late night, shortly after that in Jensen Beach, and have been in this area for almost over 20 years now. Um, so uh, as a small business owner, um, I'm always looking for a, an angle to make my business more efficient and to um, work well with my, you know, things that will work well with my employees that will give me better uh, control over what they're doing. Awesome. Awesome. And so, Jim, it sounds like you're a seasoned veteran as well. You've seen the progression of technology. Looking a little bit back, I'll go down memory lane if you uh, allow me to. But as far as the evolution of how we got here today to hybrid technology, um, we've all touched, held our uh, hands on a mechanical optical total station, two man, three man crew field notes uh, field book. Right in the rain, Dietzkin, number two pencil, doing a race, cross through your field notes if you make a mistake. Uh, so that's kind of where I came from as far as uh, working in the field uh, in terms of land surveying and surveying technology. Uh, after that came data collectors, uh, GPS, global positioning system technology, of course, uh, came on the rise. Static, the old cook data post-processing. Uh, and, and those two technologies, uh, optical and then robotic in the mid 90s, uh, kind of uh, traveled along this path with G- GPS, which then became GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Systems. So now we're working obviously today with multiple constellations. But I remember uh, when I went into retail sales in the 90s, wondering at that time with the uh, uh, inception of robotic, and seeing the growth of robotics and a one-man type survey, uh, a field crew, which would be just worth one person, was really a shock to the industry. Lots of the larger engineering surveying companies weren't prepared um, to have a one-man system. It was the smaller offices, just like you're saying, Jim, that at that time embraced something that would give them the ability to go out by themselves any time of day or night. They didn't require another field person. They were more efficient. 
And I often wondered as GPS traveled along to uh, from static to basin rover, then obviously to network RTK, which of the two would survive or would one overcome the other? Um, so today's topic hybrid is amazingly now fast forward to 2021, we're still here, thank God. And you're enjoying hybrid, which now we're combining the two. Um, Brent, tell me about your sales experience, total stations, uh, your experience when you first grew into robots, GNSS, and your first experience with hybrid. What was your first experience with hybrid technology? Well, my first experience, actually, you know, well, when you really go back, you know, when you think about GPS and then you, you think about robotics, you, when you think about GPS, how you used to have all the cables and you had the antenna mass and everything was going up and you had the backpack, <laughs> you know, you had that. And then the, the robot came out and it was like, oh, wow, you know, and then, you know, and now we're, we're merging those two technologies together. It's just it's just amazing. Because, you know, when you think about the robots, you had it. Oh, yeah, it follows me and it goes. And then the quick lock came on. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this is amazing. Right. And then now we're now we're merging those two technologies together. And the, the biggest thing with that is, is just how seamless it is. You know, no matter where you are, if you're under a tree, oh, well, let me switch to robot. If you're right. with if you're out in the open, you got you got the GPS. It's just amazing how fast our the technology goes. And and with the with the survey, because that's why I love this job actually, is because you know, I've been doing this a long time. And then with the with the technology, there's always something else to learn. It's just amazing how fast this technology. What what can be next, right? You don't have where can it go? It's just never ending. True, true. I, I do. Yeah, I'm the same way, Brent. I'm as passionate as you, Jim. I'm sure you as well. I mean, it's like Christmas morning. Pinch me, I'm dreaming. I woke up. Uh, what's next? What's new? And every time I get a hybrid system in my hand, I wonder, man, how. How much more efficient can we be? And, and you're absolutely right. I think the use of field computers, Bluetooth, wireless, that's where the field crews, no external 12 volt gel cell alligator clip exactly. batteries, right. um, you know, the, the, the uh, exceptional range of UHF radios. So you're right. I forgot that. Boom. I mean, we get rid of the power receiver, antenna, cables, data collector, serial nine pin. It's all gone away. A lightweight, you know, less than 10 pound does everything for me on top of a pole and voila, now I'm in Xanadu, Nirvana. Jim, tell me about your experiences. Where did you grow? What did you start with and how did you get to uh, hybrid today? We're going to go backwards. First of all, <laughs> that's this, okay. I like going backwards. This hybrid technology is like having superpowers. And I've said that before. You go out as a one man crew and there isn't anything that can get in your way. There's nothing that's going to stop you. Um, you pointed out, Brent, to the fact that you can get up underneath trees, things where GPS isn't going to be ideal. But one of the other things that you can do, which is one of the most amazing parts of which is going into the robotics as well as a robot by itself, is the fact that you can switch. If you have to do a whole bunch of repetitive shots, why walk around to GPS sitting still, grinding down, getting accuracy when you can just a couple shots, get the, get the set the robot up, a couple shots, localize it. And then now you're doing instant shots. Everything's just bang, bang, bang. You can knock out 100, 200 shots in no time because there's no one behind the, the robot. It's, it's following you. The second you stop and you're stabilized, it's got a shot. And you're going. And it's just it's really um, the speed of it is amazing. Now we can go back. I was really proud of myself. One day, I think I took 150 or 200 shots with a uh, Topcon GTS-2B, which is old school turning the cap, the turning the dials and writing down everything in your notebook. And we thought we had just killed it that day. That's, <laughs> that's a, an hour before lunch now, you know, that's not even, <laughs> that was a whole eight hour day. And now I can do that in an hour if I had to. And so just going from one extreme to the, to now, how much time it saved me, how much uh, less I need to have a coworker. I can go out by myself. And like I said, I can accomplish anything I need to do now. Yes, I, I agree, Jim. And it's interesting because, you know, we used to, and crews are still doing it today, unfortunately, breaking out GPS, right? Wires, cables, base, rover, set control, stop, close everything up, put it in the box. After lunch, let's get the robot out. Let's transfer points, new job, start instrument. Why are they doing this? Let's combine the two. And you're right, when I'm running with hybrid, 
I'm wondering, I, I, I am, I'm like a superpower, Superman, Batman, pick your superhero. So I'll be Superman. I can't uh, leap off cliffs in a single bound, but I can at least run around the street. I am old. I won't fall down or break a hip, but I do feel power though. There's no kryptonite in my system here. I can basically freely go where any man has gone before. And it's not just like you said, Brent, the rotation speed and the quick lock of the robots, but it's the ability to what you're saying, Jim, is pick up more points on the site. I'm getting a better picture of what I've done in the field and I'm not missing critical points on a survey where I thought, ah, I got I better get this point on my next setup. Well, there is no more next setup. You're doing everything from one setup. And that's, I think that's one of the keys. Brent, what do you think about as far as removing setups? What are some of the benefits, uh, not just Jim or some of your customers are talking about hybrid? Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that you feel like you're Superman, right? But you don't have to be Superman to actually carry it. Because when you, when you <laughs> think about it, it, it sounds like, oh, man, I bet that pole is just heavy, right? right but right. it's actually very light because the technology has changed so much. Your GPS receiver is extremely small now. And the, the prism is extremely small. And we're putting that on top of the prism. And so your pole is actually light. So you don't have to be, you know, have Superman strength to carry it all day long. <laughs> but, but yeah, so just, just picture this. So let's just say you're doing a, a title survey and you have it in front of the house. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've got to go behind that house. Well, with the traditional instrument, you would be traversing over. Well, now, oh, it's, it's, and this is what's really nice is in the software, it's just, it's a push of a button, right? So what, no matter what screen you're in, whether you're taking a topo shot or you're staking out right there, there's a picture. And if it shows GPS, you're in GPS. If it shows a robot, you're in robot. So now you go behind the house, you're pushing one button. Now you're in GPS. You don't have to exit the screen. You know, when you, if, when you first start thinking about this, you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. I'm in robot. I'm going to have to exit three screens and get in. Right. It's one, but it's a one push of a button and you're right into the GPS. Oh, now I want robot. Boom robot it's it's really amazing technology and how fast I, just think about how much time you're saving not even having to exit screens just that aspect of it is saving you what a couple of hours a day if you're working all day true you're right Brent, because i'm thinking if we get into the minutia of what's really happening here you know the advent of the processing speed of our field computers our windows 10 computers i can drop them i can submerge them right just the you know, the robustness of the field equipment, the light weightedness, like you said, I've got a receiver now that is as heavy as my 360 prism. So you're right. It's weightless. It's basically nothing Absolutely. on the pole. And to the point of you're saying everything is seamless in the software, how quickly easy button to switch, not only that between the two technologies, but what Windows 10 and the so field software has given mm -hmm. us is Bing Maps. So now I automatically have a background map, street or Bing to work from. Um, I also can see, which I love in the background, robot, robot, robot. I can still see if I have a fixed or float solution in the background while I'm working robotically. This is Absolutely. good because then I know if I'm prepping the next GNSS shot, I now have enough satellites, 1725 satellites. Now I can jump to GNSS and get those shots where I can't see the robot. Jim, tell me the story, though, because you started to point to you were a little nervous and apprehensive about, hey, let's go to Jim Cesaro and say, where did you start with equipment, though? I got to know you started here. How did you get to here today? What did you start using in the field? Well, of course, it was the old GTS-2B, but eventually I did go to data collection. You know, um, the GTS-2B was basically, hey, man, I started a business on my gold card and <laughs> I didn't have any money in the bank. And I was using what scraps were around so I could get out and do my thing. Um, right. The minute I could afford to, I went to a total station and then I went to data collection. And then I've always been on data collection for many years. Mm -hmm. And I had this misconception that GPS, hybrid technology, all this stuff was overkill for what I do. I'm a block, I'm a lot in block surveyor for the most part. I do mm -hmm. have some larger projects. I'm working in a 600 lot subdivision, doing all the builder um, support in there. Um, so, I just felt like I was taking a bazooka rabbit hunting and it didn't make sense to me to have GPS. And that was a dumb, dumb way to think because now that I've been using the G GPS, we've been using it for a little over almost three years. And now I'm starting, the lights are going off and I'm like, I can own this town. I can collect GPS on this whole town and own it. And I'll have everything all built and I'm building giant, my own GIS maps. 
right. I'm building in my in my CAD now that um, I've got whole sections of this town that I basically got locked down. If anybody comes to me and says, oh, well, we're having a problem. Yeah, let's go see that problem because I pretty much own those six blocks over there or these 20 blocks over here. And it's all starting to come together. And if I'd been doing this a lot longer, I would have been in a lot better spot right now. So I'm kicking myself a little, but now I'm not going to let the technology um, get too far ahead of me. I'm always going to stay on the leading edge because I can see the value uh, not only of having that technology, but also man, you just pointed to some of the say time savings, how much time just the hybrid saves me a ridiculous amount of time. I, I talked about this before um, to uh, you. I was doing a ma big acreage survey and I could go. Um, I couldn't. I got over to an area with just the GPS wasn't going to work. Well, great. Plop down the robot, localize it. And now I'm on the robot. And uh, then, oh, I got another place. I don't have to traverse. I just go over and localize the robot. And it's just like having your own little satellite sitting there that's mm -hmm. working. You're, you're working around. And how, that's amazing time saving because in the old way of doing this, you've alluded to this. You'd be dropping a couple trav points, mm -hmm. localizing them, then jumping and putting your instrument on one back site and the other and then spinning your points and then getting in the office and fixing that later. And now you don't have to do that. It's all threaded together. When you come in and you download your point file and you drop it into your CAD, Everything's there all threaded together. There's no rotating anything on or doing anything. Or if you had taken the time and gotten your bearing and your coordinates so that you could do that. And feel, well, that's time you're taking in the field. So you don't have to do any of that. It's all threaded together. And it's an amazing, what an amazing time saving. Awesome. And Brent, I'm going to have to bring you in. Tell me the first time you saw Jim, what you showed him and his reaction, because Jim is telling us total station data collection, stop. Okay. I get it. I'll get into GPS, GNSS. He's loving GNSS, but he's missing something in his life. You brought it to him. Tell me, tell me about the day when you brought him the robot, how you showed it to him, and what was his uh, feedback? What was his uh, expression? Well, it was actually, to be honest, it was dumb luck, right? So literally, <laughs> I was down the street, and I was actually doing some GPS training for another customer. And uh, I, was, I was heading back. And I just happened to see his office and it said Atlantic land design. And I was wow. like, Hmm, that, that, that sounds interesting. Let me see what this guy does. <laughs> so so I, I actually made a U-turn. I go in, I start talking to him and, and I was, I started asking about GPS and this is just happened to be when the VRs just sort of came out and mm -hmm. he, he told me he's, he wasn't using GPS. Oh, boom. Really? So I started telling, you know, and when something just comes out as a, you know, as a salesman, you're excited. Oh, so the sure. VR came out. Oh, it's a GPS. I was like, GPS. I was like, well, how are you not using this? We've got our whole, whole network set up. And so we, you know, I just set them up and then, you know, so I got them in the GPS. And, uh, and it, it wasn't real smooth selling, right? Because he was, he was using the network, but he was doing a lot of form boards. And the elevation on form boards mm -hmm. isn't great using a network. So, you know, he actually had bought that, that VR system. He bought another system. And then he was, we had went through the whole, you know, let's put it on a bipod. Let's make sure you're taking 20 second, 30 second shots. So then, then I came to him and I was like, look, this is actually the perfect solution. You've already invested in the GPS. All you have to buy is the robot and the prism. We can put it on top. You'll have the best of both words. Uh, worlds and we went outside and he i mean literally his eyes just got and he was like yes this is what i need and i was like i yes i know and, and, <laughs> you know, and from there and from there he, he's been you know he's been great it's, and he's like telling everybody you have got to have this so it's it's just been a, a, a wonderful relationship you know that's so, awesome. I, I'm just glad I could help out. I'm just glad I, I made that U-turn that day. Well, <laughs> you, 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 you call it luck, Brent, but that's the uh, tenacity of uh, a sales rep, a, a solid rock star sales rep. You're a rock star to me because uh, a lot of guys would have just kept driving, but um, you made the U-turn. You said, here's an opportunity. And uh, yeah, it was fortuitous. I mean, I, I think right. it was a special <laughs> meeting with, uh, with Jim. So Jim, he gives you the GNSS spiel. You're in. You buy in, and then he's making you drink more Kool-Aid. He brings over the robot. He told me what you thought of, but what was your reaction then when you saw Brent with the robot and he went over hybrid? Well, yeah, he came by with a, a, a used robot and said, um, you know, I want to show you something. And he took me outside and he started doing the demo. And 
he doesn't know this. Uh, I think I talked about that every day for six months until I bought it. Um, my <laughs> wife was sick of hearing. My wife was totally sick of hearing about it. Um, <laughs> and, and and then finally he and this is a smart salesman here. What's that? Um, what's that statute you can use to uh, fully deduct the? Uh, the oh, one seventy nine. One seventy nine. One seventy nine. He comes in and he shows me the one seventy nine. He says, "Here, man, you could buy it and fully write it off." And I'm like. Order one. Go there ahead. Go. Do it. So it's, good salesman. Box. This, this is your salesman of the year right there. That was a smart, smart move because I was sitting on the fence about dropping the money on it. And then when he came and said that, I said, yeah, we'll do that because it's been very busy here. Let's just say that. So it was a, a good time to make that move. Oh, that's awesome. And, and again, Brent, uh, I do agree with Jim is saying you're using all resources possible. Uh, you come across very friendly. Uh, very congenial. So I could see how uh, you have a wonderful clientele, a wonderful client base uh, and being a very successful sales rep. And and Jim, like I say, I appreciate you embracing Brent and the technology. Um, So a little bit more about hybrid. So what type type of uh, savings are you, are you on the job site with hybrid? So thinking about what you did prior, what is the biggest difference that you find in and out just uh, more efficient, more points or what is the, 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 form board issue we were having became where I would be sitting on a form board corner for 20, 30 seconds, just trying to grind down the, you know, the accuracy on the vertical, the horizontal has never been a problem. Um, so what I ended up resorting to is I wouldn't just worry about the vertical anymore. I would just uh, break out a laser level and mm-hmm. go back around, but that's again, wasting time. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting up the uh, hybrid system, um, initializing it, localizing it, and now I'm running around and like, instead of standing for 20, 30 seconds on a one corner, um, it's as long as I can get myself good and level and take the, take the, um, take the observation and I'm moving on. So phone board surveys went from something that probably took, I'd say 20, 20 minutes plus to, I'm surprised I'm there longer than 15 minutes now, because that's just how fat, once you're initialized and moving, it took longer to initialize than it did to actually shoot the whole job in. So yeah, it's definitely a huge time saver. Same thing with building square outs. It's like having a an instrument man that's an Android because he's just basically, you're getting that constant, constant <laughs> feedback as you're moving around. It's really, you know, before what you did, you stopped, the guy shoot you. Oh yeah, I moved back. That's robotic, I know. But again, initializing, getting on, I'm building square outs. All these little builder things are going way faster now. Yes, agreed, agreed. And there's two points I want to make. One is um, to your point of uh, the robotic introduction, like you said, Brent, to Jim, I think we all have to remember GNSS, GPS is a tremendous tool, but when there's uh, uh, tolerances or the job necessitates tight vertical, you know, this is where the robotic instrument, I mean, one to two millimeter uh, of distance meter accuracy, I mean, if you need tight vertical work, it's the optical robotic instrument is still your choice of, of tool in the toolbox. DNSS, yes, I can go anywhere, uh, f- fixed solution, a couple of hundreds horizontal vertical, but if you really need tight uh, tolerances on the vertical, uh, this is where for all these years since 96 with robots, uh, they have survived because of their, uh, not only in indoor work, but also for tight vertical work as well. And the combination of the two is, is just mind blowing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is we're talking about GNSS and robotic really as the sensors. It's the software that's tying it all together. Mm-hmm. I think we all know that on the call that it's, you know, it's the Bing maps, it's the efficiency of the software, it's windows 10. I have a fast processor, not only that, but it's the other things, the uh, fringe benefits, so to speak, a uh, micro SIM ATT, I'm on the network. So now I have internet, so I have Bing Maps, stop. But I also um, can, when I'm done, or Jim, you hire me with a new hybrid, uh, hybrid system and I'm a train trainee, you might say, Matt, uh, uh, you're a great guy, college grad, but I want you to send me uh, on every hour, everything you've done, everything you shot or everything you've laid out. So in the background, the nice thing about field software, and Brent, I'm sure you can attest to this, is uh, the use of cloud. So not only is it expediting the field work on the ground by taking shot, 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 but it's also then taking what I've done, sending it to Jim, I'm three hours away, three hours traffic, I can send him what I've shot as far as 3D coded line work, stakeout reports, et cetera. But Jim, owner operator, can check me while I'm on the job site uh, before I've left. 
And a lot of things that the guys don't know is with that eight megapixel camera in the field computer, I could be taking shots and pictures, then those get zipped up into the job file as well. So I want to hear your guys' uh, thoughts, so Brent, when you're selling the product, because with someone like Jim, he's drinking from a fire hose. He's trying to take the best that he can from it. But there's so much more small little things, I think, that are inherent in the system that can also help out. So I take pictures. Jim sees what I see on the job site. Changes to the design. He can send me the updates and I can have them. And after lunch, I can start laying them out. So it's not just the hardware and the sensors, but it seems like it's the with with internet, with cellular connection, with using cloud-based technology to get job files back and forth, uh, that seems to be expediting the process as well. But Brent, what are your thoughts on there as far as what the market is looking for more than just hybrid? Well, absolutely. You know, your equipment is only as good as your software, right? right. So it, what I really love about the software too is, and, and this is, and I've had multiple customers tell me, is, you know, because the software is almost code-driven. Right. So in, in Bing Maps, it's actually if you're doing lines or edge of payments, you can you can see those lines. And when they miss something, it's visually right there. So it's no more. Oh, I forgot to do this because they're actually right. seeing it live. <laughs> right. You know, right. as soon as as soon as they hit two shots, the lines are being drawn. You know, however you want to set it up, you're seeing that live. Yeah. And so that that really saves a lot of time. And not only that, but even as a training tool. Uh, where we have the cloud-based software, as you, as you mentioned, where as soon as they they're taking shots, they can they can see it in the office, and you can actually replay live how they shot the shots in the field, and so so that's a, it's a great training tool for for yes. new new uh, new field crews as well. So there's just so many benefits to this stuff like that because it's really software. It doesn't matter how good your equipment is if your software is not up to par. Then, then really your equipment's not up to the par. And really our, our software is so, it's so amazing. Just even just with the, the touch of a button switching from GPS to robot, we've already mentioned that, but just the, the Bing map, seeing, seeing your shots live, getting the lines drawn in as soon as you shot them. It's just, it's, it's amazing technology. I think you're right, Brett. And I'll get to Jim in a sec. Hardware is hardware. GNSS receivers, robots, everything on the market, their sensors, they're top notch, they're fast and they track real well, but it's, you're right. It's in the software because what the software provides me for workflow, for imagery, like Bing maps or street maps, um, the ability to send and receive data, have the office immediately see that. Uh, it's those things in the field software. You're, you're right. That is a difference between software X and software uh, Y. Uh, I think uh, our software has the ability to take those sensors together and make them work basically at their peak performance. Because again, hardware, it, it, we're all good, we're all accurate, but it's really in the software product. Pointing to the Bing Maps, one thing I noticed, I was doing reflectorless measurements and I was using Bing Maps and you know, Jim, uh, Brent using reflectorless, I'm behind the gun now taking shots to building corners, utility poles, looking for wire sag, whatever. I realized using Bing Maps, as I'm taking reflectorless, you've got parallax, you're focusing, you're trying to shoot through trees. The ability to see my point store on the building in Bing versus 40 feet back on a wall, ah, I caught yeah. my mistake. And it's just the little things that are added in the software to not only speed the process of field work, but to eliminate errors or mistakes or blunders before you, mm -hmm. left, before you left the job. Jim, what have you found as you've dug into hybrid, but more into the software? Is there anything else that you can tell us that you appreciate or want Brent to come out and show you even more <laughs> since we're talking about these other pearls? Yeah, we're going to get the cloud stuff real soon, buddy. Um, <laughs> I, don't ha I haven't been using that yet, and I want to learn how to use that because what we've been doing is basically exporting the job when it's done and then emailing it because you can open up an email and you, it's Windows 10, open up the email app and email the points in and um, this is for a little lot and block surveyor, not a big construction stakeout guy. We'll get a client that will pretty much have a meltdown and I forgot to order a survey. And I have a closing this afternoon. Can you save me? Well, yeah, we can because what I do is I send my, I, I have, a, um, uh, the, we have the ability to send the field notes and the field data all into the office um, before it even, um, before the crew even gets back. So they can hit that job do what they need to do, send all the data into the office, keep moving. And by the time I'm, cause I'm out in the field too with the other crew, like I said, I work half day in the field. By the time I walk in, it's sitting in, in my inbox ready to go to be checked 
gone over, look at the notes, look at the points, look at the CAD file, and boom, I'm sending it out. They realistically, they could buy it if they ordered something eight o'clock in the morning. My receptionist could get it out to the crew to change gears, go over here, fix this thing, send everything back to the drafter. The drafter drafts it all up. By the time I'm walking in, I'm checking it and I'm getting it there just in time for the closing. So in those situations, you, you, you couldn't do that before. If I had a, a data collector, I had to break out a laptop, download it. Now I'm just in the right. same screen. Close this, email, boom, there you go. This cloud stuff, Brent, we're getting together real soon, buddy. We're going to talk about this. I like that. I like that a lot. And I got a guy I'm training right now, and I'd like to be able to watch what he's doing while he's doing it. So that would be awesome. Well, it's interesting because I was with a, a, a land surveyor about uh, three months ago. A, a dealer said, hey, Matt, you're the hybrid guy. You bleed hybrid. You've done hybrid presentations. Can you come out and help assist me in my demonstration? And this was a surveyor who had Basin Rover GPS and an older robot. And I think there's many in our industry, not just surveying, but forensics, um, other markets uh, where the, uh, this type of technology would really help. But in his case, he had the pieces. He just didn't have them put together like hybrid. Mm -hmm. But at one point, it was interesting. He had the, the Windows collector and he was still doing nine pin serial, still driving back in nine pin serial to the computer. And I said, you know, you're, you're a couple hundred dollars from cloud. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, and he's like, are you kidding? I can do that today. I said, yes, today. And he's like, no more nine pin serial. And 20 minutes on the phone, Jim, no kid. And I basically talked him into, all right, connect to Wi-Fi with your controller, go to enterprise and let's go ahead and have you create the project. And within 20 minutes, he was transferring data in his office to, uh, to cloud. So he could see the you know, the reality, because uh, at some point he's going to have to hire someone. He's going to have to keep an eye on that person and the ability to just touch and see what the field crew is doing and getting things to them more immediate is, uh, again, it's just uh, a, a kind of the, a, a part B as far as putting that on top of what these sensors and what this technology is doing. So you're selling me something, Brent. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> well, well, here's the, the, the good thing about this is it's actually already there. Just got to turn, uh, uh, turn it on. That's, yeah. all, that's all there is to it. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Well, isn't that basically what the hybrid is too? It's just an unlocked module. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. that you know, that, and, you know, we've, we've just uh, discussed this over, over dinner with, with other cousins. I keep telling, you know, our other customers that we, we talk to, you already have it. All you got to do is turn it on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one good thing, too, is, you know, a lot of when you start talking about technology, uh, as, as technology grows, a lot of a lot of times, even when technology, oh, well, you have to purchase a new piece of equipment. Well, this technology actually works. You can have an older robot uh, with right. a new GPS or an right. older GPS. We just put, get the adapter on top of the prism with that GPS on it. It's not that you have to purchase all new equipment. It right. actually works with your, you know, even your older receivers or your older. It's uh, it's amazing how this goes, you know. So. Yeah, the backward compatibility that we have in our software allows those that have your absolutely right print that have uh, older equipment. They, they are still candidates. They can still use uh, older hardware, just a, a you know, a $79 adapter, 5S by 11, <laughs> it. put it on top. And yeah. voila, the trick she is done. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but all in all, I, I think it's a tremendous technology. I'm trying to think. What else as far as in the software, not just hybrid, but smart boxes, being able to customize what I want to see for data when I'm collecting and when I'm staking out. Uh, I like to put local time to see what time it is. I like to see the tilt angle because obviously now right. a lot of our technology, you don't even have to uh, um, plumb the pole with, uh, with our GNSS technology. So there's so many pearls, quick codes as far as expediting my shot to shot collection where I can create translucent codes on Bing Maps. I mean, the the list is really numerous. Uh, of, Absolutely. Of what and, well, well, that's what's great about the software, too, right? Is, is there's no limits to it. I mean, because right. everybody has different technology. I can't tell you how many times I have to custom customize the software. Well, this guy wants, wants his stakeout routine not to say stakeout, he wants it to say layout. Instead of topo, he right. wants to say side shot. Right. Uh, and, and it's and you can do that. You can make anything say which you know whatever technology <laughs> you're using. Well, I'll make it say whatever you want it to say. You know, it's it's totally up to you. That, that software is amazing. I think you're absolutely right. It's not rigid. It's flexible. You can make it as advanced or as simplified. So, Jim, 
once you have a new hire come in, Brent can show you if he hasn't shown you already how to customize and you can really eliminate or uh, delete other programs that you may not want or use, but you can simplify. Or like you said, I'm an old software guy from the 90s. I still have terminology in my head. I like to use the word Kogo. Uh, so mm -hmm. I can change these things in my software. And this, these are small things, but they're a big help for a guy that's getting into our software to make it a little bit more easier for him to feel more relaxed. So it's not just the hardware and hybrid, but it's get, getting him uh, more comfortable with our, with our product. Is there anything special, one thing I guess in the software as Brent is saying that kind of provides you, you know, a, a, an easier path to performing hybrid? Is there one thing or two things that you see in the software that ties us all together? Well, yeah, like we talked about earlier is the ability to just be able to jump um, onto the robot very easily without having to localize at, you know, without having to get on a known point. You can just set it up wherever you want and um, you don't even have to be on any known points. Once you give it two point resection, it's right yeah. where you need it to be. It knows where it is. And that is such a huge time saver because uh, there are many times I'm, as I'm working, I can see I'm going to have a problem over in that area. And I know I'm going to go ahead and set the robot over there. I'm nice and clear out here. And eventually right. when I get over that area, I'm just going to drop the robot down and go around it. So that ability to switch over in this without having to do major calculations in the field is right. uh, huge, especially in Florida, you get 110 in heat index day. You don't want to think too much. And if you are thinking too much, <laughs> if you are thinking too much, you're most likely thinking wrong and you're making mistakes. You don't even realize it until you get back to the office. Again, some of the things you're talking about, though, when you have the Bing map up, you can see if something's not going quite the way you want it. And that is a great aspect of in real time seeing the exact points you're collecting, um, something you really couldn't see unless you went through two or three screens before. So that is another huge time. So everything in this hybrid technology seems to just be another way to save time through and through. And I like we were just alluding to I've been I've been preaching to a friend, another surveyor friend of mine. Uh, that's also a mutual friend of Brent's. You need to get on this. He isn't on this type of technology. And I'm, I'm preaching to him hard that he needs to get on. I'm, I'm singing, I'm, I'm singing the song about this because I think it's really a great technology. Awesome. Well, Jim, thank you so very much. Um, you're a great advocate for the technology. Um, I'm so happy that you're uh, being productive and uh, uh, basically that you're you're seeing a return in your investment. Um, and I appreciate you singing the praises of the technology to others as well. And hopefully they'll, they'll listen as well. Um, Brent, any other final thoughts you have, I guess, because I'm not sure what else, as far as we're into 40 minutes already, uh, is there anything <laughs> else you have to add? I mean, I don't really have anything else to add, but you know, just like you said, you know, Jim has really embraced the technology and, and in our industry, that that's the deal, right? If you don't embrace the technology, you're going to get left behind. You're going right. to get outbid. You're going to get outworked. Uh, you know, you've got to embrace the technology in our industry. Yeah, exactly. I think if you tend to wear blinders and you sit back and you don't invest, uh, you're going to be left behind. You're correct. Like Jim is, is ready to rip it and roar. And I mean, you know, he was telling me before, you know, 20 years ago, 2020 hindsight, but man, you know, what he wished he had purchased prior. I mean, he's so happy he's purchased now, but moving forward, you're right. I hope that others also, uh, see the validity of this conversation today. Uh, they probably have the pieces and parts. They're just so close to putting them all together. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, surveyors and other markets, I alluded to uh, forensics. We've got uh, state highway patrols that are using 14 uh, uh, highway patrol crews with hybrid for efficiency. So it's interesting looking at other markets uh, that uh, hybrid, you know, touches us geo positioning specialists, Absolutely. professionals like Jim. When I go see a state highway patrol, they're doing the same thing that Jim and Brent and I are doing. They're setting up quick, doing a resection, collecting as many points, and then getting out. Whether it's collecting top curb, bottom curb, catch basin, they're doing gouge mark, uh, spent shells, body parts. But nonetheless, they're trying mm -hmm. to open the closed lane. They're trying to collect as much legal data as they can uh, to represent a map. And it's fascinating to me because you think we're just scratching one market, but there's so many other geo oh, uh, yeah. positioning professionals that this type of technology, because it's lightweight and cost effective and easy to use, customizable, it touches more than just the professional land surveyor. It kind of has a ripple effect into other, other markets as well. Oh, absolutely. And that, it's very big benefit in accident reconstruction. 
this this technology here is that this actually is a perfect uh, solution <laughs> for accident reconstruction. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Jim, I'm going to give everybody else uh, one last final thought. I hate to say goodbye and close out, but Jim, any other thoughts, anything we've missed? Is there anything else you want to tell uh, uh, the public audience out there that may not be aware of hybrid? What would you like to say? Uh, two things. One, if you're sitting on the fence trying to decide if you want to get this, don't even just do it. This thing probably paid for itself in about five months, easily in five months. It paid for itself, maybe less. Second thing, it's not Superman. Batman's the one that buys all the toys and gadgets and stuff. So that's where <laughs> Batman comes in. I bought all the toys and gadgets. I'm wearing the tool belt now and I got all the things. So that's where Batman comes in over Superman. And that's, it. that's all I got to say on this. Awesome. So, so no more need for Robin. Robin's out of a job. Batman right, you know, Robin. Batman's a man crew. <laughs> Robin, we don't need you anymore. He's not running the instrument. <laughs> Awesome. Great thoughts, Jim. Brent, you finish it up. You tell me what your final thoughts are. <laughs> How can I follow that up? No, I, uh, <laughs> I'm all for uh, Batman. So yeah, we're, we're good. But thank you. All right. Awesome. Listen, uh, guys, Jim, Brent, I can't thank you enough for joining uh, TopCon Talks Construction, today's podcast. Um, I hope we didn't go over too, too much, but uh, I think it was good stuff. I think the content was great. I think it was lively. It was uh, uh, very dear to my heart. You guys were expressing your true sentiments. So again, I can't thank you enough uh, for joining us. So You're uh, for, from my end here, from TopCon, Matt Marcioni uh, from TopCon Positioning saying thank you very much for joining this pod uh, podcast. And thank you. We'll see you around again.